For those who don't know me, I'm Mark. I'm the head of all our marketing at Further. Um, today, thank you for coming, by the way. Today, I'm just going to go through um, a few basics of search engine optimization, um, just basically because it's, quite, it's mutually beneficial that everyone understands what we do, and there's hopefully something in here which can help you run your businesses online as well. Without further ado, then, first thing. I think we should start with is actually what is search engine marketing. In its simplest form, search marketing is a set of techniques used to increase your website's visibility in search result pages. Okay, so it's essentially meaning you're coming up when someone's searching for something relevant to either products or services you sell or provide. And don't just think Google on that. And um, there's there's all types of uh, search verticals like eBay, Yelp.com, and um, Kelku, all kinds of price comparison sites. So search, there's a lot of uh, avenues people search which are outside kind of the traditional search engines. And part of search marketing, or well, part of online marketing is obviously search. There's a lot more to online marketing, and you can have, uh, do affiliate and advertising, internet advertising, which is kind of your standard banner advertising, email marketing, social marketing. There's a whole mix that goes into online marketing. And um, so separate the two in your mind because we're just talking about search engine marketing today. And drilling one step deeper, there's actually two types of search marketing to confuse things, which is natural, what we're going to be talking about, search engine optimization, and paid search, which some of you may have heard of Google AdWords. Mm -hmm. And um, what we've got here, this is a screenshot of just a Google results page. Marked in green boxes are paid or sponsored links. You can buy those positions. So if you want to rank for, I believe, I just search for loans here. If you want to appear for the search term loans, you just bid on the terms loans and write your advert. And then you pay on a click per click basis. So you only pay when someone clicks on your advert. Um, advantages are you get to rank very quickly. Disadvantages are obviously you're paying for every single visitor. And in competitive areas like finance, you know, you can be paying five, six, seven pounds per visitor. And um, what we're focusing on today um, is organic search engine optimization. The set of results in red are actually what Google decides are the most relevant web pages to your search query. So by algorithm, they've automatically decided, okay, if you're searching for loans, money expert, this page on compare loans is the most relevant thing for you. Um, as we go on um, through this, I'm going to mainly be talking about how search engines work rather than kind of directly techniques we use. The reason is if you can um, kind of get your head around the logic of how they work, you can make a lot of decisions and come up with ideas yourself as well. So the first thing, there's two elements to search engine optimization. So if you want to get your website to rank in Google, the first thing you have to do is build search engine friendly sites and pages. So all your major search engines are there. The actual pages you have to build, um, there's a set of rules which we'll go through later, which basically is how you display the content on your page, it's the kind of technologies you use to build your website. Search engines have problems with some technologies looking through your website. So the first step is there's an on-page kind of section if you like. So if you want to rank well, for instance, in Google, the first thing you need to do is make sure your site's search engine friendly. The second and um, possibly larger aspect of SEO is building links in authority, which means if you've got a web page, you need to get people, Dr. Linkarati, who are webmasters themselves, they, they participate in forums themselves, they have vlogs, the kind of people that can give you links to your website, or if you can get mentioned on BBC News or an EUP if you know a journalist, that kind of thing. Um, links act as kind of votes on the internet. What, what Google's trying to do as well is judge how popular individual pages are. So to do that, and the only real method it can use, is looking at how many people link to this resource of information, because it's quite a good, it's quite a good um, factor to use, it's quite a safe assumption. If you've got hundreds of people linking to a certain website every month, you can say, well that's probably quite a good website, because lots of people are referring to it, so it's probably either a good resource of information, um, or you know, it's very fun, depending on what niche it's in. Um, 
And getting those links will put you in touch with your end target goal, your end readers, because then they'll be able to find you through search engines. Understanding intent is part of building a website and part of search marketing. There's all kinds of um, analytics and trends you can get your hands on um, when you're running websites. This is a screenshot of a um, Google Trends tool, which you can actually use yourself. It's google.co.uk forward slash trends. And what you can actually do is it can give you search history, which is just comparative search history here. It doesn't actually give you raw numbers on the amount of searches. And it's important when you're, say, choosing, you say, okay, I sell t-shirts, I want to rank for you know, uh, buy t-shirts online. It's important you understand the intent behind the search. So you're, you're essentially connecting the correct searches with, with the correct service, product, or web page. So just as a basic example here, we've got MySpace in blue against Facebook. So, I mean, that can demonstrate then you can actually track the popularity of um, different sites or brands via how much they search for. So you can see MySpace kicked off before Facebook, and it's kind of actually peaked now. And I think the latest one of these, Facebook's actually overtaken MySpace in terms of popularity. Um, there's actually a company called Hitwise that you can get a subscription to. It's pretty expensive for that. I think it's £13,000 a year. But they give you the top end um, in terms of search data and how people use the internet. Um, the great thing there is you have to, you have to realise how much power there is in that data. The shows like um, X Factor or things like that, they can predict who wins before the results are out based on search trends, what people are searching for. Um, and that applies to all kinds of things in terms of products and services as well. The next example I've got is, for instance, searches for bird flu. This search, these labels here, indicate when it's been mentioned um, on online news sites, so things like BBC <coughs> or News24. And you can see bird flu is a search that's primarily controlled by, um, by news. People only kind of search for it when it's actively in their minds in the news. Apart from that, they don't particularly care. Or you get seasonal trends, like Halloween. So that's a seasonal, typical seasonal trend there. You get in, obviously your newscasts every year about Halloween. But it gives you data on, for instance, if you're going to start, um, if you're going to position yourself in the market, it gives you kind of the best time. It gives you the run-up, so you know when those searches are going to be. And they're all pretty basic examples of, of uh, looking at um, intent and trends. Okay. So if we look at why, why do we actually need search marketing? I'll give you some numbers here. Over 80% of online transactions start with a search action. So that's whether it's an inquiry or a sale or anything like that. And again, search action can be whether it's on eBay or on Google. Search is kind of the primary way now people find the information they need on the internet because it suits them. I imagine most of you, as your homepage on your computer, probably have Google or Yahoo or something similar. Well, that's how you get to, to a lot of websites. <clears throat> how far do searches look? This is actually a really good piece of data came from a test group of 650,000 people on AOL, and AOL is powered by Google results. So you can, there's a parallel with Google here. 91% <coughs> of people don't go past, past the first page of search results. That drops off right down to 4.5% for page 2, 2% for page 3, 1%, and then half a percent. So, I mean, if you're not on the first page of search results for your terms, you're going to lose basically the vast majority of your traffic. You're not going to get it. And you can take that one step further. If you've got 10 results on a page, it's a bit dark there, but that's position one all the way down to 10. These are the percentage of clicks broken down. So over half the people click on the first result. Oh, that, sorry to interrupt, can I ask a question? Is that, where are we talking natural listing? So this is natural listing, so, yes. Okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't apply to paper clip, just comes from. So on your natural listings, over half the people click on the first result, 13% on the second, 9% on the third. So you've essentially got three quarters of all your clicks on the first page and the top three results. So that brings into stark contrast, even say you started your own search engine optimization campaign, and you say, brilliant, we've gone from page 12 to page 2, or page 1, position 8. 
you're still not going to see the return until you hit these top positions. You'll notice there as well, position 7 gets 0.3% and then position 8 gets almost 3%. The reason for that is when you do a search on most resolutions, position 7 is below the fold, and then when you scroll right to the bottom of the page, position 7 goes to top of the fold. So that's kind of the booby prize. There's limitations in search technology. <coughs> Google, Google has what are called box robots they send out, and all they do is they go to websites and they follow links and they basically explore the internet. Um, there's certain technologies uh, you may have heard of, like JavaScript, which Google can't use. So when you're building your website, um, if you comply to W3C standards in terms of accessibility, which are kind of web standards anyway, you should be okay in, case of, in, in terms of search engines as well. But that's one of the key things. Um, there's limitations to things like Flash as well. Um, until very recently, um, Google couldn't see any content within Flash. So if you see somebody with an entirely Flash website, Google can't actually read any of the content in there. If they don't know what the content is, they don't know what to rank it for, it's that simple. And you have to bear in mind as well, people who might be partially sighted, screen readers won't work with Flash. Google has started looking and um, being able to take apart Flash files now, but it's still pretty basic. The other thing is, is actually, is you'll notice a lot of these things with search engines overlap with usability of your website. That's because Google realizes if you give the user a good experience, your page is more likely um, to be popular and more helpful. For example, say we've got a, um, a dog kennels website, and we've got um, specific kennels, we'll say, for different types of dogs. I don't know what dogs are, maybe a greyhound, a fox or something. <laughs> Okay. So we've got our different dog pages. If we if we do our page titles and our content in every page it just kind of says dogs. And then Google, someone does a search on Google for dogs, Google comes along and says, well, which one of these pages do I rank for dogs? They're all about dogs as far as I know. So you've got to look at being very specific with your data. So you might have kind of more of a hierarchy. So you have, you know, dogs as your top page, and then you'll have our uh, you know, Whippets, Dobermans, Boxer Dogs, and title those pages correctly and be very specific. And that overlaps very quickly with the user experience, which is when users look at your website, they want to very quickly be able to determine what the content is on that website. Um, I mean, it's, it's quite a good test. If you get someone to look at your website, give them two seconds, and then say to them, what's that page about? If they can't do it, there's a fair chance that search engines can't do it either. Reputation management is actually a really interesting point. Um, I mean, even things like terms of branding, what better branding is there if someone searches for your core service and you're number one? Or if someone's actually searching for your brand name, Coca-Cola is a brilliant example of this. If you do a search for Coca-Cola, you'll see they actually own loads of websites. They've got their official kind of corporate site, a UK site, they've got football um, subdomain, they've got um, a Coca-Cola Enterprises website, a Coca-Cola Company website, and you think, why would someone do that? Why not have a centralised website? The reason is, if about three years ago you did a search for Coca-Cola, and it's on page two now, page one was, there are undisputed reports that Coca-Cola bottling plant managers in Colombia, South America, allow and encourage parallels through death squads to murder, blah, 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 which isn't really what you want people finding out about your brand. So, if you've got a very small search presence and someone searches for your brand, people are going to find what people are saying about your brand instead. <laughs> so there's an element of control there in terms of search engine optimization as well. <coughs> and of course, age-old competition. High search posi uh, positions for competitive terms are worth lots of money.